Hello, Jess Too Good here. Today I'm reviewing a LEGO Spider-Man Far From Home set, The Molten Man Battle, which has 294 pieces, three minifigures, and retails for $30 in the United States, where it's going to release in mid-April. I got it early from eBay, I'll disclose that. I've heard it's been cited at stores, I'm not entirely sure, so go check your local Targets or whatnot. Seems like Targets the one that's getting stuff early, but let's take a look at those minifigures. So the first minifigure is Stealth Suit Spider-Man, who is the only exclusive minifigure in the set. And this looks awesome, especially for a LEGO Marvel Superheroes minifigure with some new torso and leg printing, as well as some really cool new face printing. I love the kind of silver shine some of the pieces have on this minifigure. And at the back, you do have some more head and torso printing, which looks great. Which LEGO also provides these web pieces for Spider-Man, which are nothing new, but uh, these are used in various parts of the set. Since the one in Spider-Man's right hand can be connected to various bar connections on Molten Man. And the next minifigure is great as well. I like how this Mysterio came out. It looks awesome. It's our first Lego Mysterio in general. Uh, the fishbowl headpiece is actually new and will return for the Mr. Freeze minifigure in the Batman line. It's interesting and kind of a change up from, say, Sandy's uh, helmet from uh, the SpongeBob line or that other one that they've used for quite a few minifigures. And there's even a top part where you could put accessories, so I want to see what people do with that. On the inside, we do have this flat silver headpiece, which is quite rare in this color. The only things I don't like about this minifigure are the fact that his power blasts are blue, because it seems like from the comics and even from the movie, they should be green. And also the fact that he comes in the two other sets, so he's not necessarily exclusive. I like his cape color as well, which is a newer style cape. And at the back, we do have some more torso printing, which is really neat. And finally, we have Random Fireman, my favorite Spider-Man MCU character, which, yeah, why'd they include this guy? He's so boring. He's so bland. He uses all existing pieces. Uh, I do like the build for his fire extinguisher, though, where they use a flintlock piece in that color, which is actually really hard to get in that color. And it, it's just a different build than what we usually expect from a fire extinguisher. But yeah, this is a very bland figure in general for a LEGO Marvel superhero set. They could have thrown in one of Spider-Man's friends, or just have an extra minifigure in the set and you could still include this guy because I can't imagine this guy was very costly to include since he uses a pretty common face print and a pretty common torso and leg print. So taking a further look at the build, right off the bat this looks a lot like the Crystal King from LEGO Power Miners, which is not a bad thing because that is a very unique and very beloved set. It came out 10 years before this and this has a very new twist to that where it looks like it came straight out of the street. And I really like that idea in general and they execute it pretty well here. You'll see with the various parts, like right away, you'll notice how there's this car right here or how there's a stoplight pointing out right here, which says Crater Road. And that is a sticker on a tile. There's also some more stickers, just giving a little molten design with some rocks and whatnot, which actually have a nice gold shine to them. And those are on some two by two uh, sloped pieces. But this front face is entirely printed, and that's a really neat design. Just some great printing on there. It's the newer shoulder pad piece, from my understanding, or it was used in CCBS. And that just kind of connects to the front uh, modified 1x2 little uh, mini ball joint part. And you can stick that back on pretty easily. And since it is on a mini ball joint, it has some rotation to it and articulation. There's actually two ball joints, one at this neck section, I guess you could say, then one right where that uh, shoulder pad plate that serves as the face goes on. Also notice how they use the roof rock pieces in a new color, or at least with a new design on it. Uh, the trans orange isn't new, but it's very rare, and that comes in a few times throughout the set. But there's also a version that has this gold kind of printed on there, and that happens a few times throughout the set as well. That's a really useful piece, and I love how that came out. There's one at this top shoulder right here. Uh, this one is just a regular one. And at the back, you can see more of those stickers, which some of them have different designs, even though they're on the same pieces. And even at the back right here, there's this uh, little uh, bar and the design of this, just to show more of an organic look of it, it's popping out of the ground or whatnot. And that has a sticker. There's another instance of that same sticker and same build with on this arm right here. And those use a mini ball joint, a little cup right there, uh, connected to the bowl at the end of this uh, little hand. The build for the arms aren't anything revolutionary, but they work just fine. You do have a ball joint at the shoulder right here, which does give some shoulder movement and even a ball joint between the hand and I guess this arm section, which that actually gives a lot more uh, different poses and such than say the War Machine Hulkbuster, which was a set I liked but I like this articulation. So this middle section is just kind of the design that is stuck onto this Crater Road stop sign. 
And then we have the hand itself, uh, which we kind of took a look at, but the design of this does use another one of those very nice uh, decorated uh, parts of those rock pieces. And you can rotate it uh, 360 degrees if you'd like. There's also a connection via this uh, translucent orange chain, which just kind of connects to the end right here. Some nice added detail if you ask me. And then of course this hand right here, which if you want to put the firefighter to be held on to, uh, who's probably the least interesting figure in here, he could actually be held on just like that. So I like the build going on there as it adds another play feature. And unfortunately this end part can't rotate, which usually with these uh, little hand builds, you can rotate the fingers or whatnot, or the section that has the fingers, but it's not a big deal. And the right arm has a similar structure to it, except this end is a rapid stud shooter, which if you mess with that, those go flying everywhere. And I'm probably never gonna find those studs again. Uh, you do have this decorated element right here once again. You could rotate this as well since it does have that mini bulge joint at the end. Nice street lamp design kind of popping out of there, which is on this clip piece at the end, so you can move that as you'd want. Uh, this section is sort of similar to the one on the left side, but not completely. Uh, we do have another one of those stickered sloped pieces. Uh, there's also this really nice sign design, which connects to the end of that section. And it shows that maybe it's, it's a one way or cars can't go that way, but that could be used in like a Lego city or whatnot, which I appreciate. And note with both of these arms at the top of these shoulders, they actually have uh, these uh, mini ball joint sections where you could adjust them up and down or whatnot and rotate them around, which adds to the effect of what is shown on these arms for Molten Man. Moving down the torso, that front end of the car is clipped on this bar in the middle, which is just a really nice design. And so you can move that up and down as you'd like. And this section right here has another one of those translucent orange uh, rock roof pieces. And then of course we have the legs, which are pretty basic in their build, but uh, two points of articulation, one at the top of the legs and then one at this middle section where I guess you could say the feet begin. So you get more rotation and different poses out of that, which I really appreciate as well. A nice one of these decorated ones with the gold on it and all around. Uh, this does not look bad for the legs. And let's get some poses out of this guy. Replacing those missing studs, he looks a bit like Mega Man in this pose. This is a cute, why are you looking at me pose? And I was even able to stand him on one leg. And now that we're done posing, there's two more things I want to cover before we move on. This top bar right here can be used to kind of carry him around. It actually supports the weight of it. It's just that he'll be tilted downward a little bit. And finally, I just wanted to appreciate how LEGO took the time to cover the back of the build, as it looks good from all angles. But that's it for the build of this guy. Let's take a look at the packaging and then the final verdict. So the box for this is the same size they use for, say, the War Machine Hulkbuster, which I think is a $20 one turned sideways. No, actually, I'm probably wrong about that. Like the side art right there. And, of course, the back shows more details of the set. And unlike the Toy Story 4 sets, there is actually a set recommendation at the back or, you know, the little advertisement. Uh, I love these. Uh, not the most interesting one, but it is kind of stylized, which is quite cute. Can't wait to get my hands on the Hydra Man set. That's one of my favorite sets of this whole spring wave. For me, the only thing that brings this set from a really great set to a very good set is that the minifigure selection is the best. Self Suit Spider-Man is actually really detailed and awesome, especially for a Marvel Superheroes figure because he has like leg printing and whatnot, which is really awesome. The Mysterio is a good minifigure for sure, but he's the same version in all three sets, so that's just a problem in general of all three of the sets. Especially this one where it doesn't seem like the value is there with the minifigures included specifically, because the third minifigure is this very boring, very basic Fireman. I don't know what's going on there. They could have thrown in maybe an extra minifigure if they're going to do a Fireman or throw in one of Peter Parker's friends, which we only got one in this whole wave. So I'd rate this one a B plus. I still really recommend it for $30. I just wish they improved the minifigures a bit because that self-suit Spider-Man is very good. It's just the other two choices are kind of weak. So that's it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.